Hey, welcome back to my channel. Got a beta FPV, and this is the naked GoPro version. A beta FPV 95X that doesn't want to work. <laughs> oh man. So basically, flying through the air, cruising along, and it just falls out of the sky. No, no real apparent reason. So the one big thing that you can do real quick is, is you can hear it when you plug in your LiPo. I just have a, a 3S here. Plug it in. That's all she wrote. You hear that? Let me make sure you can hear that. And that's it. So we're not getting the, the dee 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 dee. So there's no communication between the flight controller and our ESC. So let's go ahead and take that flight controller out. All right, so we have our flight controller out. And yeah, I tell you what, we can plug this into the computer real quick and check to see if it'll boot up. So everything's off. This is just a plug that goes to our uh, Vista air unit, okay? So this little plug here goes to that plug right there. The ESC plug, goes onto the board right here. And I have a previous video, like it's 45 minutes long of tearing this thing down. So if you have any questions about how to get this flight controller out, um, I have a, a video. I don't wanna redo that video again right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this flight controller out. And what we can do is, is we can just real quick do a continuity check on it. Now, if you're not familiar how to do a continuity check, I have a video on how to do that too. So I'm just basically gonna come in here and I'm gonna grab the five volt and ground. So basically if you hear that, it's done. Okay. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna grab the five volt and ground. So that's good. And then we have our V bat and our ground pin right here on the back. Let me zoom in for you real quick. I'm gonna just check. So there's no, there's no, it's not, you hear that beep? That's not happening. So let me zoom in here. See if I can film this for you. So basically the, the pin here on the side is ground. Okay. That's what's holding that. That's what's holding this whole Molex on is these two ground straps. Okay. And then right next to that, this pin right here, see that pin right there? That first one is the the battery voltage. Okay? Get that out of your way. The second pin down is ground. So if you put your leads on that pin and then you come to this pin, um, you shouldn't get any continuity. So 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 no beeping. Alright, so we know the flight controller doesn't have any shorts. Well, you know, that's a that's a big deal. Before you go plugging this into your computer, you know, check to make sure. We know that we, you know, we did the continuity check on it. So now we can go ahead and plug it into the computer. So we have our micro USB. We'll go ahead and plug this in to the computer. All right, and then you see the LED came on. So we have a single, single blue LED. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh my goodness. Nope, unplug that right quick. That right there is a, is a voltage regulator. Wow, that's amazing. That got so hot. Oh yeah, that, I mean, that's right now. So right here is the, uh, the reboot button on the flight controller. Let me zoom in here. So here's the reboot button uh, for the flight controller. And then right here is a is a regulator. You see that? So you have one here, one here, um, and one here. So that's switching the voltage. That right there, these are really, really hot. That one right there just, I mean, absolutely on fire. So we've got something, something bad going on with this flight controller. Now, this thing's pretty new, so definitely have to get a hold of the get a hold of the vendor. And let them know that this flight controller went bad pretty quick. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and order a new flight controller for this. All right, we got our uh, our new flight controller in. 
So we have our old flight controller out of the quadcopter and let's go ahead and see what we got here. So it just says uh, something simple on the front, nothing there. Then here it's beta FPV 4S. So it can handle up to a 4S LiPo F405 brushless. And that's about it, a couple email addresses. So just kind of label. Take a look at that if you want. See if that'll be helpful to you. All right, so we have our flight controller. And down in here, a little, little wiring package. So they have uh, some GUIs. So you got four GUIs for the cutouts here. Plug those in. And some screws. And then there's a three pin and a four pin connector. So it looks like they give you some connectors in there. So three pin and a four pin. So the three pin would go into your LED. So if you want to run external LEDs, you can use that. And then for your receiver. So if you want to do like a RXSR or a um, Crossfire Nano or wait a minute now. Yeah, look what I got. I picked these up today at Buddy RC. That was pretty cool. TJ was right in the middle of a uh, live stream when I sneaked in there. Uh, and he was talking about these. It's very, very good deal. I can't wait to try them out on the channel. I'll let you know. So I grabbed a, a few of them. Anyway, so you have your four pin head header for your uh, receivers. So everything... I'm kind of surprised they didn't put something in here for the air unit or the Vista. Because um, on the quadcopter, there's a little pin and out right there. I'm surprised they didn't have something in there, but that must come with something else. So anyway, here's the new flight controller. The first thing I want to do, uh, we already went through it with this one. And I'm going to do a continuity check on this. I don't want to plug that into my computer and have any issue. The V-Bat and the ground pad, it's labeled right here on the flight controller. So we're just gonna go over here to V-Bat and ground. Okay, without touching them together. So we're gonna touch those two pins and nothing. So I feel confident that we don't have any uh, nasty surprises when we plug it into our computer. Cause that, that is not fun to plug in a Something that's going to short out your USB and your computer. So we plug that in, and now you can see us. Okay, now you notice on this one, which we did not have on this one. This one we had the solid blue light in the center, but we did not have the green blinking LED. So that's also an indicator that our, our flight controller is the reason why this thing just fell out of the air. Um, I'm not feeling anything hot. Now my hand is uh, extremely dry and calluses i'm not going to create any shorts i don't know if you want to go pushing around on your board if you got sweaty fingers but i'm just feeling because this one here that those uh switch legs the voltage regulators there they they were really really hot yeah this one nothing i mean they, they're not even warm so i think we're good to go here now we unplug this here Here's the thing, before we go putting this into our quadcopter, we need to connect it to the computer and download a file because this quadcopter is a pusher and the motor sequence is different and also the board instead of being, like this would be a normal configuration for this board, USB sticking out the bottom of the quadcopter, silk, pre silk screened arrow pointing uh, to the front, but in this quadcopter, the orientation is upside down, so it, this thing has has been flipped. So we need to download a file, and fortunately, the Beta FPV ninety five X there's a file to be had. So let's let's jump over here to the laptop real quick. All right, so we'll jump over here to Beta FPV's website, and we're gonna go ahead and grab this top part here, support and go to CLI of quadcopters 
and then there's diff files that we're looking for now this is the 95x v2 405 flight controller okay and we're running tbs so this is the diff file for that quadcopter and then up here there's a diff file for the beta 95x v2 405 all in one okay so the all-in-one is is not what we're looking for because on this quadcopter the ESC and the flight controller are separated so this is the file that we want so click on that and then it'll say do you want to download for FR Sky no we're not using RXSR XM plus or any of that stuff uh, Fataba spectrum we want to use the TBS because in this quadcopter we're using a crossfire nano okay so go ahead and download this uh, snippet okay and we're just gonna go ahead and um, save it to a file folder so you, you should know how to do that right okay so go ahead and get that done now let's go ahead and uh, jump over to uh, beta flight and here before we we don't want to download anything yet right now we just want to go ahead and plug that flight controller in All right, we're gonna plug that flight controller in. See if I can get my finger out of the way there. Okay, so we got our COM port open. We're gonna go ahead and hit connect. And we're, we're moving around. Everything's moving the way it should. Okay, so right now I'm holding the board as level as I can. The little arrow silk screen is pointing in the uh, up direction. So on, on the flight controller, you know, the little printed arrow is pointing forward and it's on the top. I'm going to hold that board as level as I can facing the uh, uh, computer and I'm going to click here so now back right left now here's the thing that's not the correct orientation for this quadcopter so that's why we need our CLI snippet we need to um, copy it to a clipboard and then paste it in here or load it from a file which that's what we're going to do but before we do that this is a brand new flight controller I'm going to get a diff uh, or a dump file okay I'm just gonna hit dump I'm gonna grab all this information here okay all the way up to dump and then I am going to copy to my clipboard and I'm gonna save that into a note file so if anything happens I can reflash this board or whatever but um, and you can see here this is omnibus f4 SD and it's 357 okay so they're not running uh, the latest beta flights at all this is 357 which happens to be one of my favorites I mean it's a it's a great it's a great thing and I don't know if this thing is uh, works very well uh, when you upgrade it to 42 but uh, right now we're just trying to get this thing to go up back up in the air so let's go ahead and save that to a note file all right so we got that all saved to a note file and now we're gonna load from file so you're going to go to that file where you saved the uh, the snippet from the website so for TBS wherever you save that to it's time to use it so go to load from file and and, uh, and copy uh, this information out of that file okay all right so it says here um, load file CLI from the information review and load and and so basically it gives you a chance to kind of look it over real quick and that's nice in case it's corrupted and has a bunch of uh, jargon or, or bizarre things but you can see here that the diff file um, is they're resourcing these motors and they're changing the direction of the board and everything so this is something you're gonna have to have or this this thing ain't gonna work too well looks like we have a pinno set so anyway this all looks good let's go ahead and hit execute and you see here the bottom if you don't want this to automatically save and, and reboot take this save out but leave that in and hit execute it'll punch it all in save it and it's done so all right so we're back here and I'm gonna just go ahead and unplug the flight controller go ahead and let that kind of rest for a second cool back down whatever go ahead and plug it back in and uh, got our COM port back up and now I'm going to connect and you, I'm moving it around in my hand but nothing seems to be happening here so we're going to we're going to um, turn the flight controller upside down so the direction it's going to be in the quadcopter 
and we're going to calibrate accelerometer. Okay. All right. Once that's finished, now we have uh, our quadcopter. I'm holding the board upside down in my hand, and I'm holding the silk screen arrow upside down, pointing directly at my PC as best I can. I'm going to set that so now back, right, left. It's kind of confusing, but I have my. Let me let me show you on the bench real quick. Bench here. So we're plugged into the computer. You're going to hold. Originally, you held it like that. Okay, and then you centered it. But after doing the CLI dump, uh, the diff file for this quadcopter, now we need to hold it like this. So it's upside down basically. So the silk screen arrow is on here pointing that way. Okay, does that make sense now? So let's jump back over to the computer here and, and I'll show you what I mean. You're gonna hold this you know, as, as level as you can with the silk screen arrow on the underside pointing towards your computer as, as level as you can. We'll calibrate it once we get in the quadcopter and put it on a level surface. But for now, let's get the orientation as best we can. So silk screen arrow on the bottom pointing in the, in that direction. So the computer, let's say, let's say this is your computer. Okay. So here's your PC. Hold that board just like that as, as level as you can horizontally and then holding the arrow pointing directly at the face of your I'm straighten that up I don't want to get particular but man let's make sure we understand here and then we're going to go ahead and hit the uh, reset Z axis okay so let's jump back over here and do that all right so we're sitting here right now we got our holding that silk screen arrow as tight as we can to the uh to our PC, we're gonna click here. So now back, right, left, forward, back, forward, back, right, left. So now we're good. Everything looks good. Uh, you know, the accelerometer is not perfectly level. Okay, we're gonna to have to do that in the quadcopter, but we had to calibrate it uh, to get this thing to function properly. Because when we first plugged it in, this wasn't acting right. Go to configuration, and you can see here, that the flip has uh, taken place in the CLI. When we went to CLI and dumped in that diff file, the, the flip has happened. So there's a bunch of other uh, parameters here on the flight controller. There's some things in here that I'm not really, I'm not really liking. Um, but it's, it's bone stock. And we're already set up. We need to make sure that this is set up. So we have our serial base receiver and we're going to use the crossfire. So that was the difference in the in the diff file that we took. And I can't help it. Right now I'm going to change this. I just, I just have to. So let's go ahead and uh, save that. And now we're going to go ahead and get this in the quadcopter. So I'm going to unplug it and install it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get this thing installed now. So we have our orientation correct. So now it's going to go basically in the quadcopter like that. Okay. So that's the whole big deal about getting that centered right. So when we get our quadcopter first plugged in, you know, it's correct when it gets in there. So the thing that I'm going to have to do though, before I can put it in the quadcopter is I'm going to have to take this connector off. So this connector here is for the air unit. So I'm gonna have to unsolder that and solder it on to the uh, have to solder it on to the new flight controller. So we know that we have. Let me, let me go ahead and zoom in for you real quick. I'm gonna put this in the stand and then I'll get that one put in. All right, so we have our flight controller, our old flight controller, with the bad voltage regulator. And these two here were getting pretty warm, but that one right there, I'm going to tell you what, that thing, I'm surprised it's not completely melted um, off of there. As hot as that got, so fast. So we're going to have to take these pins off, and here, we're going to have to take these pins off. And we're going to put them on this flight controller. So I need to go ahead and tin up these two pads here, and then tin up these two pads here. Now on the other side of this flight controller... Those two pads represent the um, uh, TX1 and RX1. So this is a TX pad and the RX pad. So that's what's going to go to our um, air unit. 
or our Vista, or, you know, the Cadex Vista. You know, this thing right here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, tin those up, and we'll go ahead and solder that wire in. And if you have any questions on how to solder a 30-gauge wire to a flight controller, I have a quick tip video for that. All right, so we have that done. Go ahead and take that out. So we have our connector. We'll fold that back around this way. So now, basically, the orientation of this will go into the quadcopter. So the front of the quad, the back of the quadcopter. And then we'll pull this connector up over the side here. And that's the way it's going to go down into the quad. So let me zoom out a little bit for you so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so we have our flight controller. We're ready to put it back in. Now, the USB connector, okay, it's going to go face down into the quadcopter. The silk screen arrow pointing forward, okay. And this connector is up out of our way. This one is pulled up out of our way, okay. And this is our ESC2 flight controller. And then this little connector here is our uh, TBS um, or Crossfire Nano receiver. So we need to pin this in. Now on the flight controller, closer, so you have your, your four pin connector for your receiver right here. You have your USB. So this first pin on the plug is your C for current sensing. And that current is being relayed to the flight controller from this shunt resistor on the ESC. So current and all the way up to VBAT. And on our Molex, our plug, the red wire and the blue wire. The one thing you want to make sure when you're plugging this in is you do not want to bend the pins in this, in this connector. It is really easy to bend those. And because we're in such an awkward position here to plug this in, um, it's kind of... It's kind of a pain. Now I have um, some angled tweezers I like to use. I'll put the tweezers on each side of the plug. So I'll kind of get it in position and then I'll try to square it up best I can. And then using it on each side, I'll just kind of push it straight in. And then if I need to, I can give it a little, a little nudge. Okay, so we're all plugged in nice and tight. And now, to fish that little plug in. So this is for uh, for our Crossfire Nano receiver. We're going to go ahead and plug him in. There's not much slack here, but we'll we'll get it to work. Once you once you kind of get that fed in that hole a little bit, get it lined up so you're not going to bend those pins. Give it a little push, and then we'll just seat it. We'll make sure it's seated correctly. Push on both sides of the of the connector. All right, we're seated all the way in, and now that is ready to go down inside there. Uh, but first, I have to reapply the the little gummies. So there's going to be four of these little dudes that love to bounce around. So we'll get those on all four corners and we'll cinch this, uh, cinch this down in and attach the screws. So I'll go ahead and get this put in. I don't know if you knew, but in this, uh, in the kit that, that, um, this comes with, there's these screws here. They're kind of long and black. Uh, that's for, that's for this here. Okay. For that protective plate. The ones we want for the flight controller are these lighter, shorter colored ones. I didn't, I didn't know if you knew that or not. I thought I'd mention it. Now, I just want you to know I went in here with my multimeter and I tested these two leads to make sure that they were correct. Okay, so if we put our, if we put our multi -lead, multimeter on here and we test those two points, okay, uh, those are VBAT. So keep that in mind before you. Uh, if you're running your air unit off of that, you're, you're running your lipo voltage to your air unit or your, your Vista, whatever. So, and just making sure that the polarity is correct and, and everything. So, 
We have our four pins here. We need to just connect up that. Okay, so we're all connected there. So everything's buttoned up. Basically, we just have this little, this little plate to put on. We zoom out here. All right, so we're going ahead and we'll go ahead and uh, put our lipo to this. We have our props removed. Okay, props off. Got to doing stuff. Anytime you play a light button, you gotta do that. Alright, so we'll go ahead and plug in. Alright, so we have all our tones now, finally. Uh, the receiver's not hooked up yet. And we have our... I'm gonna check real quick to make sure we got video. Let me unplug here and I'm gonna turn on the uh, Tango 2 and we're gonna turn on our H. Uh, DJI goggles to make sure that we got video and connection. All right, let's go ahead and get our light bone, plug it in here, and checking our goggles. So we have we have video of the bench here. So all my junk on the bench. The best picture I can get for you. So the quadcopter's got good video. Obviously, my my filming apparatus ain't the best. <laughs> so everything seems to be all right. We're not too hot. We have our receiver connected there, so we can go ahead and um, we have our our Tango two. Go ahead and and arm that. All right. All right, and then of course the motors, you know, they spool up and go crazy because because air mode's on. So looks like we're set up here. This is working. Everything seems to be going good. Uh, just need to make sure that our motors are turning in the right direction. So this motor should be turning. Counterclockwise, counterclockwise. This one should be clockwise, which it is. That one's clockwise, which it is. I'm not trying to stop them. I'm just touching the feel. Now, as soon as I, as soon as I give it a little bit of throttle, okay, you can, you'll see they kind of ramp up. See how that, see how it went. I didn't do that. I throttled up and it took off on its own. That air mode in there is, is what's causing that. So that's it. Everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the props on this thing and, and take and see if we can get a little hover out of it. But that's basically uh, the issue that we're dealing with is that that flight controller had failed in mid flight. That flight controller has some bad regulators on it over here. And I don't see that the new one. Um, I don't see that the new one is having any difference in componentry, so we'll see how long the new one lasts. Hopefully it's, hopefully it'll be just fine. But, hey, if you had that problem where that, you know, you get the three tones from your ESC and then you don't get the other two tones for communication, that's the, that's the, the quick and easy fix, right? <laughs> Hey, if, if you uh, if you enjoyed this or this helped you out in any way, you know, hey, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you hated it, <laughs> man, you give me a thumbs down. It all works. Enjoy the breeze.